the uh, uh, loving God of the New Testament. Uh, as the legend goes, Glanton grows up to be a strapping uh, specimen of masculinity uh, and is waiting to marry his childhood sweetheart. Uh, he's already begun laying the foundations for their happy future together in the uh, town of Gonzales, Texas. Uh, but alas, the future turns darker, much blacker, in fact, uh, blacker than a funeral pyre. Uh, when uh, Lipan warriors, uh, Lipan Indian warriors, attack the uh, village of Gonzales, Texas, massacring the old women and children of the village and abducting the young girls. Uh, Glanton's fiance is among the women that have been uh, grabbed by the Lapan warriors. Uh, though the Texans track down and slaughter the Indian raiders, uh, they are too late to save their women. Uh, the fires of vengeance now burned brightly in Ganton's belly, uh, and he would often disappear from Gonzalez, uh, always returning with fresh Indian scalps. Uh, though he fought and killed the Indians like the devil incarnate, uh, when it comes to killing, uh, Glanton refuses to discriminate, uh, butchering anyone, uh, white, black, red, yellow, brown, whatever, who happened to cross his path and piss him off. Now, he is outlawed in Texas by Sam Houston. Uh, Houston considers him a psychopath, uh, so he throws him out of Texas. Uh, Glanton loads up his saddlebags with gunpowder, uh, as well as homicidal rage, and lambs it into old Mexico. Now, along the way, he recruits a band of thugs, uh, wayward gold diggers, uh, shiftless bullies, uh, mountain men, uh, and renegade Indian scouts and army deserters. Uh, and, well... And none of these uh, Glanton gang misfits uh, was more misfit uh, than the gentleman known as Judge Holden. Uh, Holden was pale as a corpse and over six foot six in length. Uh, he's a tall guy for the, uh, for the day. Uh, the judge was thought by Glanton's men to be the strangest beast in the desert. Uh, his only desire uh, being blood and women. Uh, he's horny. He's got bloodlust, and he's horny for sex, and he'll rape any woman that comes along. Uh, once he f uh, founds, uh, he finds a 10-year-old girl that has been violated and murdered, uh, the judge does. Uh, and uh, the handprint, uh, the size of a Goliath, is on her little throat. Uh, he soon realizes that it's his own handprint. Uh, he, he's a serial killer. Uh, he kills young girls. Uh, and rapes them uh, whenever he has the chance. The judge uh, is, in fact, better educated than any other man in northern Mexico. Uh, he speaks Spanish uh, and many Indian languages. Uh, the judge knows more about plants and rocks than any professor uh, and can hit dead center. Uh, he can hit the bullseye over and over with his rifle. Now, Glanton and his gang of oddballs and psychos and misfits uh, soon enters a devil's bargain uh, with the governor of Chihuahua, uh, a deal uh, to deliver Apache scalps. Uh, the scalps are cut off, must be cut off with the right ear, still attached as proof of the person's death. Uh, in fact, Glanton is so dedicated to uh, butchering Indians uh, that he soon creates a shortage of Apaches in the region, uh, so, uh, the, uh, well, uh, <laughs> crazy uh, and uh, uh, venomous entrepreneur uh, expands his franchise, his scalp hunting franchise, plundering the scalps of Mexicans and friendly Indians alike. Uh, he does this with his gang, uh, the gang, uh, often disguised as Apaches. Uh, the attacks... Uh, disguised as Apaches, make it seem that the Indians are on the warpath, which only increases the demand for still more Apache scalps. Uh, this guy really has this murderous stuff planned out. Uh, but Glanton's scam 
uh, soon goes sour uh, when scalped Mexican corpses begins uh, begins turning up began turning up at local villages. Uh, the governor uh, decides to act uh, and places an eight thousand dollar bounty on Glanton's head. Uh, the governor has had enough. This has gone too far. Uh, and there's only one way to stop Glanton, and that's to kill him. Uh, so he puts an $8,000 bounty on his head. Wanted more dead than alive, I might add. Uh, which forces Glanton and his gang to retreat into the Sierra Mountains. Uh, now, occasionally Glanton uh, would reappear, uh, dropping into a village just long enough to mock the Mexican authorities' uh, inability to capture him. Uh, but soon enough, uh, the trail of blood, sex, and death uh, beckons him again uh, in the uh, uh, friendlier Mexican state of Sonora. Uh, Glanton's gang uh, gets back into the lucrative bounty hunting business. Uh, now, uh, when they're liquored up, Glanton, uh, who, remember, is brought up on a uh, vengeful Old Testament religion, uh, would sometimes act... Uh, like a, uh, well, a blasphemous priest uh, that was drunk on sacramental wine. Uh, he would occasionally deliver a fiery sermon to his blood-stained congregation. Uh, Glanton would call his men uh, uh, craven sinners uh, that were bent on eternal damnation. Uh, he would usually end his uh, sermons by firing his pistols uh, this was his way of baptizing his men uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeehaw! Now, when Glanton uh, got into one of these moods, uh, these uh, drunken religious uh, blasphemies, only Judge Holden uh, could calm him down. Uh, whatever other demons drive him, uh, it is gold lust that finally forces Glanton and his gang out of old Mexico. Uh, Glanton has it in his mind. He has a vision. Uh, he wants to find the ancient lost city of Cibola, uh, the city known as El Dorado. Uh, this legendary city is made up of pure silver and gold. Uh, possessed by silver and gold fever and touched by too much desert sun, Glanton and his men actually came to believe that they had reached their destination, El Dorado. Uh, they see a mirage. Uh, the judge, the psycho judge, is the only one who keeps his head, uh, telling Glanton uh, that the golden city that they are now seeing was in fact a monumental heap of sandstone formation, uh, millions of years old. Glanton tells the judge that uh, that's not possible. It's a damn lie, uh, since everyone knows that the world was no older than 6,000 years. So says the Bible, uh, says Reverend Glanton. Now the gang then, uh, well, pushed further and further into the petrified uh, desert. Uh, this is uh, uh, an area that would uh, later become uh, part of the state of Arizona. Uh, they are pilgrims of violence, greed, and lust, uh, seeking adventure and fortune. Uh, near the Little Colorado River, a large Apache war party, uh, a bunch of Apache Indians, get the drop on Glanton's gang. Uh, Glanton's men uh, successfully repel the Apache warriors, uh, but suffer extensive casualties. Uh, Fourteen men are dead and seven are wounded. Uh, so the men uh, draw arrows. Uh, and uh, those that pick the ones that are marked with a feather uh, would uh, then kill their own wounded men uh, with Indian war clubs. They got no uh, time to carry the wounded away, uh, so they kill their own wounded men. Uh, with the murder of his own men, Glanton and his gang uh, had reached a point of no return. Uh, the survivors press on. Uh, over the arid regions, the arid plains, stopping now and then to bury the newly dead or to slaughter uh, their starving horses uh, and animals. The spectacle uh, of the Grand Canyon uh, feeds Glanton's uh, delusion 
uh, that the discovery uh, of El Dorado uh, is in fact preordained by God and imminent. Uh, in 1849, the gang arrives at the Colorado River, the home of the friendly Yuma Indians. Uh, California is, of course, the land of gold and promise. Uh, and this is just over the river. Uh, and the Yumas, the Indians, control the ferry boat uh, that could take the gang into California and gold. Well, the Glanton gang quickly decides uh, to, uh, well, uh, that night they decide to kill all the Indians and take the ferry for themselves. Uh, they also decide to spare the young and voluptuous Yuma maidens, uh, since these uh, ladies are plump, nubile, and virginal. Uh, the siege at, uh, of the ferry boat is swift and deadly, 